There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing brother by the name of Dr. Justin Marchagani. Did I say it right, it, bro? Yeah, good enough. The Paisano yeah. pronouncement. You, you got it. Good <laughs> enough, man. How you doing? I'm really happy to be here on the show. Dude, I love and appreciate you, man. So guys, Dr. J is an amazing human being. I was on his podcast and it was awesome. I told him I got a lot of people in the international community that follow him uh, in the physician side of things that reached out to me on Instagram. And uh, as promised, this is his appearance on the Jay Campbell podcast. He is a wealth of information and knowledge. And him and I, by the way, just had the most amazing seven or eight minute <laughs> off camera conversation about the planet. But let me give you guys his intro real quick. Uh, started off his career in the health field, working in a surgical center as he prepared for med school at the University of Massachusetts. UMass, John Calipari. Yeah. Yeah. Working in the surgical field gave him a firsthand, up close perspective into the healthcare system. He was able to see where it shined, especially in the area of treating acute injuries and trauma. He also saw its shortcomings, which are most evident in the areas of chronic disease like diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. The insulin, I mean, the diseases of aging, which are still a problem today, the experience has shifted his focus from conventional medicine to a very much more holistic and natural approach to healing, which is why he's on the Jay Campbell podcast here today. He's a graduate of the University of Massachusetts, again, at Amherst with a degree in kinesiology and pre-medical studies. I love when docs understand building muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, he's completed his doctorate degree in chiropractor from Life West. So he's obviously a chiropractor, which, by the way, I had to move my appointment for you, my brother. So I'm oh. going in at four o'clock today for that. I get my I get adjusted twice a week, nice. but we can talk about that stuff yeah, too. Uh, completed postgraduate study in the area of clinical nutrition, rehabilitative exercise, and functional medicine. So there's no doubt this guy offers the most cutting edge techniques to help address his patients' growing healthcare needs. So a lot of you guys are going to watch the show today. You're going to come away and you're like, I want to work with this dude. And of course, we will allow you to do that at the end. Uh, he works with a wide variety of patients, all the way from pro athletes trying to increase performance and heal from injuries to the everyday person, with chronic health challenges, watching the Jay Campbell podcast. But we know that there are none of you guys out there who are inflamed, fat, or sick because you've been watching for so long, right? Yeah, uh, using a holistic approach, Justin addresses core underlying barriers to health, which allows his patients to heal faster and become better. Justin, you were amazing. Before we jump into all these amazing points, though, we I want to ask you, as I do now on all the Jay Campbell podcasts, we are in, depending on your perspective, what you could say, precarious times or the greatest times ever to be alive. And I kind of want to just kind of get your feedback, like, what do you see happening in the States and moving forward, let's say, for the next three, five to 10 years? And I know it's an opinion question, but just interested in your insights. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are waking up, whether it comes to what's happening in the world, uh, how important your health is in today's times. I'm actually going through a podcast of life right before or right during World War II, Soviet Union, Russia time, 41, 42, 43. And it's crazy to look at the turmoil that was going back in this pre kind of during World War II time. I was listening to a podcast on Martyr Made, and I'm just like, holy smokes, like it was crazy stuff they were dealing with back then. And if you think we have instability now, go back then. So it actually makes me feel incredibly blessed to be living in today times. I think it was, it was Charles Dickens, right? Tale of Two Cities. It was it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I think we live in a phenomenal time to have access to information, to, to have no gatekeepers in front of us, um, to optimize our health, everything. It's amazing. I mean, I can order my food, have it dropped off in my house. I can have my groceries dropped off in 30 minutes. I mean, we have the ability to be healthy and fully take control of our health. So I, I do love that. Beautiful. Um, I love, I like how too you are a man of surgically precise words you don't really do speak a lot of words but you do are you're very powerful when you speak you were like that on my podcast too i love that um 
Okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we want to talk about. And, you know, I look, I talk a lot about the things that you're talking about on this podcast. So I do want to make this show uh, a little bit more unusual. A little more nuanced. Well, yeah, just really, you know, push position your knowledge because I was like blown away by your knowledge. But now that I understand your background, it all makes sense. Like you understand muscle building, you've got a kinesiology background, you're a body magician because of your chiropractic background. And then we also have, of course, allopathic formal medical training. So you understand all of those things. You bridge kind of all of those sciences together if they, if they can be even called sciences. Um, but the first, the first point that we're talking about today, um, is functional medicine, the attributes investigative, holistic and safe. And look, I've had a ton of functional medicine people on here, but I really do see you separate, but you know, maybe deepen that point from a perspective that maybe most people aren't coming from. Yeah, I mean, out of the gates, right, if you're a functional medicine clinician, you're really a health detective, right? You're trying to look at the root cause of why someone has a certain illness, right? My wife comes to me. She's like, oh, my, my girlfriend has this issue going on. What do you recommend? I'm like, ah, uh, like, that's not how it works. Like, yeah, maybe you could recommend like a little vitamin C or an herb for that from a allopathic standpoint. It's it's a more natural allopathic treatment, but you need to have a really good, robust history and you got to get to the root cause. And so kind of my simple model is this, right? You have underlying stressors, pretty simple, physical, yeah. chemical, emotional stressors, right? In functional medicine, I look more at the chemical stressors, right? Gluten sensitivity, toxicity, heavy metals, poor digestion, infections, obviously physical stress matters. If you're underactive or overactive, but you have chronic injuries or pain, that's a big deal. Or if you have a lot of emotional stress, like you're going through a divorce, a lot of financial instability, that's a big deal. But I look at those stressors, you know, you call it the triangle of health, if you will. That's important. I I take audit of that. And then these stressors essentially over time accumulate and they start to break down your body system, whether it's hormone, gut, detox, um, lymphatic, immune. And when the uh, when the um, body systems break down, symptoms manifest downstream. And so really yeah. my goal is to look at the underlying systems and get to the root. Because if you're just spot treating the symptoms, pain, ibuprofen, uh, mood issues, SSRI, then you're going to miss the underlying reason upstream why that's happening. So, you know, stressors, system issues, then the symptoms happen downstream. Let's go upstream versus downstream, essentially. Well, I love that. Uh- <laughs> Tough question for you, but I mean, I'm sure you got to answer. Is there ever a place for an SSRI? If this is well, I mean, I, I mean, I would say right? there may be a place if someone's suicidal for a very acute, short right. period of time, right. while someone is getting the help they need to kind of get their stuff stabilized in their life, whether it's a, a counselor, or a therapist, getting their diet right. There may be a short window, but long term, a lot of those medications they ignore the root underlying issue, and they're just numbing people out. And most right. of the time. People have a stressful reality that they're just trying to numb out. And so if you just numb that out and you don't fix it, that's not really good either. Obviously, a lot of the brain chemicals, right, they're all protein-based. So if you're not eating protein, you're a vegan vegetarian, the raw material, the cholesterol and the fat's not in your diet. You're on acid reflux medication, so you're not breaking down the protein. You're not lifting to stimulate that brain-derived neurotrophic factor. You're going to have problems, and that, that antidepressant can't fix those underlying issues I just highlighted. You just had to mention veganism on my show. <laughs> You're going to get to I'm not going there yet. I'm not going, I'm not going there yet. Look. I mean, I could go so many directions with you. And again, you're the guy to talk about it, but like SSRIs, I'm glad you're honest. There's a narrow window. It's like one of my good friends, Dr. Rob Kamenark always says, there's always an issue for a medication somewhere in the DSM or in the medical literature. Right. But most people don't need these drugs that band-aid symptoms and never address the root cause. And obviously that's why you are in business because that's what you do. But it, it, it's mind blowing to talk about SSRIs because bro, like, you know, as a testosterone expert, I mean, that's what they do is like actually further exacerbate the root cause for men that, you know, and women, by the way, that come in for deficiencies in their late thirties, mid forties, early fifties, where they give them those drugs and it literally makes it worse. Yeah. So you have a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron, right? The neurotransmitters kind of create this chemical bridge. And essentially, all the neurochemical, all the neurotransmitters kind of stay in between these guys, yeah. right? This is called the synaptic yeah. cleft, just for the people at home. I'm doing some stuff on the video with my hand, so it kind of makes it a little bit more um, real. And Love essentially, it. the longer your neurochemicals stay outside your pre- and post-synaptic neuron, the faster they get recycled. And so yeah. an SSRI is just a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Right. And so normally these chemicals would go back into the presynaptic neuron and come back out. So it's kind of like this 
beautiful circle of life. When you block that, you accumulate this neurotransmitter as serotonin in between the synapses. But over time, the longer it's between the synapses, the faster it gets broken down. And so then you create functional deficiencies over time. And we know anyone that's been on those medications knows that the dose has to go up over time or they change you to a more powerful drug. And then we know the side effect profile, lower libido, weight gain, right, et cetera. And so obviously you can even have more suicide and more uh, issues in that realm as well. It's honestly mind blowing. I mean, I mean, you really look at, I mean, how, you know, again, without getting into the conversation off air, I mean, are we in the zombie apocalypse? I mean, when you start looking at the number of people that are taking SSRIs and then you combine that with the idea that all these other people are on pain meds, I mean, dude, I mean, I think I saw a thing like 25% of women over the age of 40 are on SSRIs, which is just absolutely insane. Just absolutely nuts. And so, yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to look at your physiology, obviously with women, hormones play a major role. So women get stressed, progesterone goes downstream. Obviously with guys, we have different issues. We have higher estrogen in guys. We we, we have estrogen issues in in women too, called estrogen dominance, right? You can still have high estrogen, low progesterone thing in women. That's, that's a thing. Obviously with what you do, you know about testosterone dropping and high levels of estrogen, whether it's from plastics uh, chemicals in the water supply, um, not eating organic animal the best water compounds. in the world is still in a plastic bottle, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, at least with the plastic though, if it's not out in the sun or you're getting it from a reputable store that doesn't leave all their freaking plastic outside, like you go to a convenience store, all their aqua sauna is in this big like crate outside in the sun blasting on it. I'm like, holy smokes. Dude, th- speaking of that, I don't know if you've seen it. I'm sure you have knowing you, but like it's making the way around again now. So, you know, that giant blob of like 11 miles around folks circulating in the, in the Pacific of yeah, the plastic, plastic thing. Yep. I mean, now they are literally selling helicopter rides and boat rides out to it. <laughs> now here's the question. Do you know where 95% of that plastic came from? I do not know. I mean, obviously China. It's so polluting the planet. Well, it's, it's China though. Well, that's where it really came from. 95%. People will know that. It's crazy. Yeah, they call it the great garbage patch. They're selling. I mean, I, dude, please. I want I want to stay focused. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, what? It's just so pathetic. All right, patient-centered, supporting the patient, not the disease. Dude, very few. So look, let's just break it down like this. Like, you're either, in my opinion, you're either connected to the insurance subrogation which is a debacle or you're not right. Like, I mean, do you take any insurance payments at all at this point? No, I, I don't take insurance because insurance gets between you and the patient. Right. They, they drive the wedge. They actually tell you what you can and can't do. It's a with joke, the patient. Dude. So just I work with the patient, right? Patient needs their thyroid looked at. We have a tweak their thyroid support. Maybe they have some autoimmune stuff. Maybe sure. they're anemic. They, they just tell me, okay, we retested it. You can't retest it again for six months. It's like, what, what is that? We, we haven't gotten it dialed in yet. What, what do you mean I can't retest it for six months? Who are you? Did you even look at the labs? Are you even working with this person? Man. So, I mean, they just kind of get in the way. So ideally in a perfect world, how insurance would work is insurance would be high deductible, right? They come in for the car accident or the weird, the really weird diagnosis or weird cancer. And they would come in and help for the really expensive stuff. And ideally you'd have some kind of an HSA that allows you to put your money in tax-free like a 401k and then essentially use your money on those type of costs. And that's better because then that keeps everything cheaper because the it's the in-between right. and all the middleman stuff that drives the cost way up. You could comment on this because I bring this up a lot, but I mean, you know, the bottom line, dude, is this. If you have a person who literally says, but my co-payment is $40, Jay. If that's the person that you are watching this show, then you have your priorities out of order. Because I've been saying this for 10 years, Jay. I've been literally saying this straight up, that if you cannot afford to spend between, and again, I know there's different levels of economy, but if you can't afford to spend $2,500 to $10,000 a year on your personal health care, then you have your priorities out of order. Because as you know, bro, literally a heart attack or diabetes, or any of these diseases of aging at 35 to 50 is $100,000 out of your pocket in some capacity. And this is what people don't understand until they have it happen to them. I agree. I agree. I mean, when it comes down to government health care, it's very simple. Ask of anyone that that's goes to the VA for their health care, what oh. that's like, right? And so, again, you know, the reason why Obamacare didn't work is, is there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, 
to have better quality of care, you have to have more competition, not less. Yes. And so when right. you create more hyper-regulation, it basically takes any small or medium-sized company and knocks right. them out. So you yep. have the big guys here that are the only ones that compete. And the problem with insurance world is companies can't compete across state lines. So if you no. just allowed insurance to go across state lines, compete globally, right? And what if you allowed people to pool, like if I'm Right. A 38 year old male. Right. I should be able to be in a pool with all other 38 year old males. Right. Yeah. Like if I'm at Apple, I'm pool with the 50,000 Apple employees. Right. But if you're an individual and you're self-employed or you have a health issue, this is where it becomes problematic because now it's just yeah. you. Right. So ideally, yeah. people should be pooled within their own age group. And um, the more incentive people get, like I got my Fitbit. I've walked 15,000 steps today. Why am I not getting a break on my insurance? You swab my tongue, right? I have no nicotine on it. I'm, I, I keep my BMI or my muscle mass at a certain weight. BMI is probably the best muscle mass. Better. Why am I not getting breaks? And so good job, really dude. a good healthcare system would look at these things, incentivize good behaviors, and then allow for more free market competition. And then ideally focus more on the HSA so people, right. people are spending and incentivized to do more preventative stuff versus the acute care for a lot of this stuff in the moment. It's funny you just mentioned the ASA and let's go back to Obamacare because it just triggered me. But like, dude, we were talking again, what we were talking off air with the globalist. Yeah. I mean, think about it. That was the beginning. That was their entry. That was their foray. Cause think about what you just said. Everything you just said was about eliminating the middle class, eliminating the entrepreneur, eliminating right. the guy who had six employees, you know, which was the industrial class of America, the blue collar people that literally built this country, they eliminated. Dude, I remember 2009, I was working for the Los Angeles Times and you know that's when they started to implement this. And I remember looking at, I had the amazing insurance, not the Los Angeles Times, excuse me, Kelly Blue Book. I had the amazing insurance. I had two kids, my wife. And I just remember looking at the, uh, you know, what the deductible went from what to what. I mean, I could do the math and I was like, what in the hell just happened? And they basically robbed Peter to pay Paul. Like you said, they created this gigantic network where they eliminated competition. Like you said, they, you know, created this hyper, you know, incentivized deal. And that everybody that, you know, didn't fall here or here was, was asked out. Right, right. Crazy. And so the whole idea, the problem with Obamacare, it had some good points with, with pre-existing conditions. But if you work for Apple, you don't have to worry about right. that because you're pooled within Apple's 50 exactly. or 100,000 employees. Exactly. Like, I used to have Blue Cross, Blue Shield. And I for, did too. I yeah, I, I, I had two kids, two kids, my wife, I think we were spending 1500 a month for like an $8,000 deductible. I'm like, all right, 1500 a month. <laughs> that's like 12, 13,000 a premium. So I got a MediShare. I got a MediShare right now. I spend 270 a month for me, my wife, and my two kids. Same thing, 270 though. a month. I have a $10,000 deductible, but I max out my HSA every exactly. year. And I use that for my own. I buy my own supplements for myself. I buy my of own course. massage and chiropractic care and, yep. and, and, and training. And so I just use that. And um, and then, you know, essentially my HSA is just enough. So if I have a problem at all with an acute injury, I'm good. And I can, I can you know, pay my deductible if I get to go to the hospital. It's funny that you say that about HSA because I just stopped even caring about that because I'm like you. Everything is out of pocket. I mean, I don't even look at it, right? Like it's yeah. literally – and I have a, a health share a health share deal too. And I think all smart people like us do, or at least you don't. I mean, you know, what are you waiting for? But, bro, we're buying that literally in an event of a life or death emergency. Yeah. We, we, we have no interest in – I mean, it's like I always say, like when would you really go – you know, Dr. J, who is a doctor, by the way, when would you go to a hospital unless you were gut shot and yeah. you had like shrapnel that you needed to remove and you needed a surgeon to, su to suture you? I mean, would you even go at this point? No, I'll tell you one thing. My my <laughs> my my four year old, who at the time was almost two, he fell down and he cracked open his head and he needed That's stitches. the time you got to go. And so but not not even that, man. Didn't we didn't even, even go, go there. there. Didn't even go there. I went on the phone and then just called a bunch of plastic surgeons. I'm like, hey, I'm not going to go to the ER and have them slap on some freaking super glue over, genius, over, his, over his laceration and have him have a scar. So I called a bunch of plastic surgeons. After I reached one, he's like, all right, 500 bucks. Gave him 500 bucks cash. Done. Over with. That would have been a two or $3,000 ER bill, and Easy. it probably would have been half-assed done. You know what I mean? Oh, it wouldn't even have been done. Well, that's awesome, dude. I know people that literally call vets for yeah. supers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, with, with vets, they're, they're pretty good too. I mean, obviously, like someone who's a plastic, they got all the subcuticular stitches and all that stuff dialed in because that's what they do. But yeah, it's in the ER, forget it. They just throw super glue on stuff. 
It's crazy. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Shane, I mean, this is so awesome. Such an awesome conversation. Or my, my, my colleague, Evan Brand, good guy, right? He fell down, uh, thought he broke his arm. He went to an urgent care facility, okay? Oh. Much better, much better than a hospital. He went to one of the urgent health ones. They did an x-ray on his arm and a full consultation, 170 bucks. Um, Done. Really. His arm was fine. But in a hospital, right, that would have been two grand. Easy. At least. Oh, man, man, he would have waited three hours. Yeah, he waited three hours. So, like, urgent care is great for, like, the in-between stuff. Like, you don't yeah. have bullet holes in you, right? You, you didn't get in a total car accident. But ideally, you know, easy thing is just just max out your, your health insurance. I, I get med pay on all my car stuff. So if I have an issue, I could spend that the way I want. I want to go to a PT and a chiropractor and massage. I can spend my money if I get hurt in a car accident the way I want. I've never shared this story, but I'm going to share it with you because you're the guy to share it with. This happened in August of last year, so we're almost coming up on a year. I pulled out of my subdivision, turned left, and a 74-year-old man and his 96-year-old mom. Now, now, to their defense, they were blocking. There was a, a FedEx truck up in the right lane. He was heading north, and I was turning out of my subdivision left southbound. I stopped at the stop sign fully and I turned left and he could not see because the truck. So the truck is in a lot of deal. But anyway, he ran into me. The cops did not say either of us. They're like, look, it's an accident. But very, very, very truthfully, bro, they're looking at me, the EM, you know, because the, they, they roll up two cars and a bus and all that, you know, we're all there. And, you know, both of us are lacerated. The mom's fine. But like, uh, the guy literally who's administering me, you know, doing vitals and everything. He's like, Hey man, I, I'm not kidding you. I've not told anybody this. This is amazing. He's like, Hey man, he's all tatted up. He's a cool dude. He's one of us. He's like, Hey man, are you, you want to come into the hospital? And he's like literally saying, um, I, I don't think you need to, but, uh, you know, and he's like telling me not to go. Cause at yeah. that time, you know, what was going to have to happen if I went in. So it was like crazy. Cause I was totally disoriented. I mean, I definitely had a second or third degree concussion. But I was like, this dude is like saying, hey, bro, you do not want to come into the hospital. So just say no without saying it. So it was right. like, I, I totally respect that there are people out there, you know, that are like, you don't want to come in here. This is not a place of healing. This is a place of death. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how, how bad you bang your head. I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you're pretty in tune with your body. Obviously, yeah. if it goes too far, a CAT scan or an MRI may be helpful just because you don't want to have that subdural bleed out. Well, I've had know. three third-degree concussions in my life, and I know exactly you know how to monitor like. myself. Yeah, I know how to monitor myself. I got, you know, all sorts of crazy, I mean, uh, what do you call it, brain surgeons that I can call literally and say, hey, what? like you, you know, I yeah. just call up a couple guys. But, I mean, it was just funny because, like, the guy was literally saying, hey, yeah. Oh yeah. You're that, refusing that's the bus ride. Yeah, no, I, I get it, man. It, it's, it's a crazy system out there for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> it's so broken, man. Okay. So, uh, the patient, right. Uh, and the participant participatory, one of the points you got is, is obviously empowered, educated, encouraged. Now I love this. And now, now I want to go back to this, you know, like let, let's just take you and I back before when we were in the blue cross blue shield world. And let's say we still went into a PPO doctor for whatever reason. Um, I remember going in and being educated because this is the birth of the internet. Again, this is a long time ago, bro. This is 15, 20 years ago. And I just remember having this one amazing PPO doctor. He was a urologist. I had like a freaking prost I had a case of prostatitis. It was burning. And I'm like, I gotta go to the doctor. And he was so cool. And I, you know, I had looked it all up on Google and whatever it was. Maybe it was Alta Vista or Yahoo. I don't remember. Yeah. And I printed right. it out. And he was like so grateful that I was actually an informed patient. But most guys, as you know now, not you, but most docs, and I guess it's most allopathic, they get all pissed off at people. And they're like, oh, so you're a Google doctor now. I mean, I've heard that from so many people that I've consulted with. So I kind of want to get your take on that. I mean, you obviously prefer somebody coming in educated and doing a little it, bit of It's homework, good, right? right? I mean, it, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because in Google, You don't want you somebody diagnosing much... themselves, right? But you want them to be informed. Yeah, you want people to be informed. You want people to look at things from a root cause because you can find whatever you want on the internet, good and bad, for anything. <laughs> and so, like, 
you want to yeah. have high level thinking on what's going on. You yeah. want to have high level thinking on what the root cause is. Right. And, and then you want to look at, you know, what are the levers we're going to pull, right? right? And of course, foundational levers are always going to be diet and lifestyle, food quality, getting your food quality up, obviously dialing in your macros, your, your macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbs. Again, because our, our eight, because our day and age, people are more sedentary, more insulin resistant. You know, I tend to always default towards lower carbohydrate unless someone's a lot more active and already is pretty lean and in shape to begin with, yeah. or is more of an ectomorph type of body type. Then we do more carbs. But in general, typically adjusting the carbs, really good protein, uh, you know, good quality protein, you know, half a gram to, to, to one gram per pound of body weight, somewhere in there, depending on how active they are. And then, of yeah. course, good fats, right? Really focusing at least half your fats coming from high quality animal fats or good saturated fat sources like coconut or tallow or, or, or ghee or butter, or even, you know, some polyunsaturated like olive oil or avocado can be great too. And really getting those things dialed in at the foundation. Then we dig in deeper and look at the stress handling system, whether it's adrenals, thyroid's really important, especially yeah, for oh women. Yeah. Most thyroid issues are autoimmune. Yeah. So when your doctor just gives you some Synthroid, they just want to bring that TSH down, right? So they, they feel, okay, your, your thyroid's now good. Well, TSH isn't even a thyroid hormone. Right, it's exactly. actually a brain hormone. So they want right. to bring that down, get your antibody to the roof. You have this autoimmune attack. Your gut's permeable. You're, you, you're having nutrient deficiency issues. So you can't even convert your thyroid hormone optimally from T4 to T3, inactive to active. So these are all important things that, that I'm going to look at foundationally. And then, of course, next after that, the gut, because you can have a phenomenal diet if you don't have good hydrochloric acid enzyme bile support. You're not breaking down your food. If you have a lot of gut permeability from infections and food allergens, that can really cause more immune issues too. Amazing stuff, man. Um, I, I want to go back to, because you brought it up earlier, I want to go back to veganism. Yeah. And I don't have a say in this fight. I'm obviously pro animal, you know, protein. Uh, you know, I have said this, you know, a hundred times at least that I believe that the human uh, digestive tract the biome, you know, over time has evolved to, especially in North America and, you know, higher areas, you know, longitudinally from the equatorial pole to eat meat. I mean, it's just kind of like where we are, right? Like Slavic peoples, Northern European uh, ancestry, you know, we're hunter gatherers, you know, what did we eat? Right. We went 20, 30, 40 hours without food. What did we eat? We needed the most nutrient dense, full of essential fatty acids, protein, uh, B vitamins, cofactors, minerals, all the things, creatine that comes from eating, you know, raw, you know, not raw, but you know, red meat, whether it was cooked or rare or overcooked or whatever. But I kind of want to get your take on it. And, you know, obviously I know you don't have a hand in the fight either. You look at things from a nutritional standpoint, but other than for a spiritual purpose, and I, and again, I, I, I give credit to the people that truly say that, you know what, I don't want to eat another living being on this planet. I want to eat things, which by the way, as you know, plants are alive too. So you don't really, can't really say that you're not eating something that's alive, but just give me your very educated take on veganism and, you know, what are the negative ramifications like long-term of being a vegan? All right, I love this conversation. I've had to perfect it because I've had this conversation probably hundreds of times with of patients. Course. And so I have this conversation all the time. And so I kind of draw a line between the argument. There's the scientific evolutionary argument yep. and these, the emotional argument. So I try to perfect both sides. So uh, <laughs> the emotional <laughs> argument of the vegan. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's pretty much all they come at. And so uh, if you look at the scientific <laughs> argument, <laughs> so if I, if I go on this side of the microphone, here's, here's the scientific side, right? So the first thing is you're looking at nutrient density. Right. And especially you're looking at fat soluble vitamins. So right. most of the fat soluble vitamins that vegans get, they have to actually get converted, whether it's from beta carotene to vitamin right. A, whether it's from alpha linolenic acid like flaxseed to yep. EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid or eicosahexaenoic acid and fish oil and these good long chain fatty acids for brain health. It has to get converted. Now, the problem is the more inflamed you are the crappier that conversion is. The more it. insulin resistant you are, the crappier that conversion exactly. is. Exactly. So, number one, there's this conversion thing that you have to rely on, tend to not get it, okay? Number two, your diet's probably lacking nutrient de density when you have to be careful of B12 and iron because your diet's probably not that nutrient dense if, if you are commonly missing those nutrients. Yep. Number three, very hard for vegans to get enough amino acids. Even the healthy vegans that do it right, they're supplementing pea protein or rice protein or hemp protein, and they're combining MCT oil and other good fats because it's really hard to get really good fats outside of coconut, avocado, palm, and olive. It's really hard to get those good fats, and it's really hard to get concentrated proteins. Most vegan proteins 
rice and beans, quinoa, whatever. You look at it, it's about two thirds to three quarters starch. Right. And so if you're not an ectomorph, forget it. You're going to be insulin resistant and fat as heck. That's, so, not, that's probably true. I, I want I want to hear you, dude, you're the man for this. So I want to go deeper on this because I've yeah. never had this conversation on this podcast at this level. I've heard so many, I want, you know, cause I want you to go deeper on the protein, the essential amino acids of the various proteins that vegans can eat. And other than pea protein, and I'm happy to be corrected on this, but I'm like you, I've looked at this pretty deeply. Most vegans think that hemp is essential amino acid protein compared to pea. That's not correct, right? Pea is the only one that is offering the exact ratio of what is it? Leucine, you know, all, all the essential amino acids that you need, it's only P, right? So most of the vegans are always protein malnourished, correct? Yeah, most of them. I mean, the big proteins that you're going to be missing in um, a vegan diet, they're going to be methionine and lysine are common. That's why you combine rice and beans because uh, one's, one has the other, the other is missing. So you can kind of combine them. Uh, P is going to be very complete protein. Uh, rice, I think, is decent as well. I, I just don't like some of the antigenic shift you may be getting from gluten in there. Right, right, uh, right. But P is going to be a good one. And again, the big proteins that you're missing on the vegan side typically are going to be methionine and lysine. Right. By the way, very important because those are rate limiting factors to make carnitine. Carnitine. carnitine is very important for the carnitine shuttle. You go back to your biochemistry textbook. That's what helps shuttle fatty acids yes. into the mitochondria. Yes. So if you want to be a fat burner, you need methionine and lysine. Okay, that's a big one. And then, of course, your branch chain amino acids, which are very unique. Leucine, isoleucine, valine, very important. One of the only amino acids that can be utilized from to the muscle directly for fuel. Right. Others have to go through gluconeogenesis, go to the liver, come back out as glucose, then you burn the glucose, not the same with BCAAs. And so those are the big things you're going to be getting on the vegan side. And then I would say uh, it's just the, the carbohydrate. You're getting a ton of carbohydrate, you know, two thirds of your carb. So that's like a 66, 70% is all going to be starch. And then the other component and within that is going to be the anti-nutrients, a lot of lectins, phytates, oxalates. These can be very, very problematic if you have gut issues, if you have autoimmunity issues, eczema, skin stuff. So these can be super problematic on that side. I think it's a, a good one on the scientific side and just the nutrient density. If you go look at evolution, right? Go look at Weston A. Price, nutrition and uh, sure. chronic disease, right? Yep. He looked at 20 different tribes across the country. Yep. Wherever there was meat, meat was consumed. Exactly. Was, there was never a vegan or vegetarian tribe. Right. When he found one, it was because there was no meat there. But when meat was there, it was eaten. So it was never like, oh, we can't do this. It, just, it wasn't there. Right. And so that's another big one. And then I always start off like – in, in conventional, in, in natural medicine, you need like philosophy. You need like philosophy that you kind of root yourself in. And so right. one philosophy I'm rooted in is old food doesn't cause new disease. Exactly. Right. It's Neolithic foods. And so right. I look at meat, right? You look at cancer, let's just say back at the start of the 20th century, right? Didn't exist. I mean, you're looking at cancer rates, one in 35, one in 40, and then a hundred years later, we're like one in three. So did our meat consumption actually go up over 100 years? No, no. no. What went up is processed food. Shit. Average sugar intake went from four pounds to 130 pounds. Right. Right. Fats became more devastated. We started eating more soy, canola, safflower, processed right. omega-6, right. all these damaged junky fats. We actually started consuming less cholesterol. And uh, I would say less, you know, micronutrients, like regarding we had more magnesium and potassium deficiencies. Right. And so and that's kind of on that side. And then yeah. if I draw the line over here. It's all about what you do with the nutrition your body gives That's you. Right. Kind of like you say about plants. Plants are sentient. You go look exactly. at this strange, strange world of plants by Clyde Baxter. He puts up electrodes to plants. 100%. And he approached the plants. Everything is sentient. He approached them with scissors and he's just I like snipping, snipping, snipping. And yep. you're seeing these spiking electrodes. Yep. And then um and, and, and then also too, if you gotta look at like veganism and, and monoculture those combines that are running man they of are course. killing snakes and oh, rabbits it's incredible. And incredible unbelievable so I, I i tell people look at causing the least amount of death per calorie right and right. so it's the most amount of nutrition per least amount of deaths and if you look at that one cow that's grass-fed and i take that one life the amount of nutrition and calories i can get in energy far dwarfs what i can get from a broccoli sprout or a exactly soy. That makes exactly. sense. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what 
not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. 100%. Bro, people are so brainwashed. That, By the way, that was beautiful, man. Absolutely amazing. Best ever on this show. Uh, and that's saying a lot, man. I've been podcasting for seven years. I mean, look, the truth is, is that most people that are vegan are pretty much entrained. You know, they watched freaking Game Changers or some nonsensical BS like that movie, which as Crap. you know, every single pro athlete that showed up was paid off. Schwarzenegger was paid off. They were all scandalous liars. It was literally, they were promoted to bl- to say what they said. Not one of those NFL players, by the way, is still vegan. It's all BS. So, you know, at the end of the day, if we really are truthful, and again, a lot of people today don't like to be truthful. You know, you, you have to, what is it? What, what, the, what's the word? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, truth is only for the most sincere. So most people, they're like, yeah, you know, I, I read a book about it. I don't like the fact that animals are harmed or blah, blah, blah. But I mean, like, dude, like, you know how I always judge it? I like, I look at vegan people and like you said, these are people eating high sugar, high carbohydrate, high processed foods, because Justin, what else are they going to eat, dude? They go out to a restaurant and you know, everything is meat. And so it's like, oh, well, I'm vegan. Like, so, I mean, what do you order? You order shit. You order processed food. I mean, this it's it's it, it's really like I said. I don't have a dog in a fight. I always go back to before people attack me in the spiritual community. I always go back to the book, the Lost Teachings of Atlantis, and the guru, the yogi in the book, literally said, "It doesn't matter what you eat as long as you give it thanks and praise before you eat it." It's very simple, right? It's gratitude. I am grateful for this sustenance, whatever it is, whether you eat cockroaches or ants or, you know, like you and me, dude, a a medium rare, uh, you know, filet mignon or a ribeye, right? Like, like it doesn't matter, but just be grateful. And, and, and And I see so many people, they're so caught up in this insanity. Like, dude, when people bring up game changers to me, I literally will turn and I'll look and I'll be like, are you sure? You want to go that route because the majority of people don't even know that game changers was a scam. And then when you look into behind it, right? Like you got big names. I won't say it because I don't want to get the, the algorithm, but like it was literally a giant promotion of what is it? Wonder burger or what is it? Not wonder burger. Yeah. What is it called? Impossible Beyond? burger. Impossible burger. Impossible burger. Well, I mean, you you mentioned that, right? I, I mean, the, pr- the problem with a lot of these foods, I go back to my same sentiment, is old foods don't cause new disease. What's the problem with a lot of these proteins? That's right. Lots of phytoestrogens. Hey. And if you're a guy, these phytoestrogens Horrifying. inhibit LA signaling from the brain. Horrifying. And you're, you're going to decrease your own. It's, it's not just the estrogen load. That's right. one thing. Right. It's the LH down regulation, yep. which then decreases your testosterone yep. synthesis yep. of testosterone. Exactly. And then now you're making more fat cells and then your yep. fat cells are an exocrine gland, which then makes more estrogen on top of that. So it's this vicious freaking cycle that we have going on. Not to mention, I, I you know, I know the AI algorithms here, so I'll, I'll speak the code. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Seven Time Olympia, former governor of California between 2007 and 2010. Was like, oh, yeah, like, like. I recommend plant-based. It's like, dude, what were you eating when you were Mr. Seven Time Olympia? Dude. You're eating 12 eggs a day. You were eating I think a, steak a, clone. a day. The I think they is, replaced you, them. You know the food that you ate to get to you to the best bodybuilder in the world isn't what you're recommending now. That's called cognitive dissonance. Okay. Listen, I have no problem calling him out. Uh I knew he was a liar when you're gonna laugh at this. So again, you know, like you, like me, we probably looked up that guy growing up and was like, wow, he's our Arnold, yeah. you know? Right. And he was in all these shows. I mean, I always think of Predator, if it bleeds, we can yes. kill it. Yeah. But I mean, the truth is, bro, is, you know, again, never been on the Jake Hamill podcast. <laughs> when I went to Hollywood's Walk of Stars way back when, and I looked at the guy's hand and footprint, I was like, this motherfucker ain't six two. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I knew immediately that he was Hollywood, right? But I mean, the truth is, is it's nonsense. Like you said, natural, that, that's a whole topic. Let me ask you about that. I, dude, I, I, I mean, I say this all the time now. I can't even eat anything that's not wild caught or grass fed. It's disgusting. It tastes yeah. like a chemical. Like yeah. how can anyone eat that? I mean, and I want to ask you as an expert on this. 
If you're eating that and you don't discern the difference, are you screwed up already metabolically to not be able to taste that? Well, I mean, part of consuming excess sugar and crapohydrates, carbohydrates, is you have this down regulation in your taste buds. So you need more artificial flavoring and you can never appreciate the natural essence of food. So totally true. One of the things might, and then also if you have zinc deficiency, My another God. big one, right? And then obviously zinc deficiency plugs into to the C word that we dealt with the last yep. two years. Yep. We, I'll let people read between the lines as an algorithm thing that knocks uh. everything down with that talked about. And so zinc's a big one. And then the down regulation of our taste buds due to the excess carbs. Now, when it comes to the environment, I think the environment's really important, but I think people are focused on the wrong things. Right. I'm much more concerned about the excess plastics right. in our water. I'm much more concerned about the pesticide runoff, the organochlorine. Marines, Birth control the runoff. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the medications that are now in our water supply. So, I mean, I think everyone should have their own reverse osmosis water filter, whole house filter, or if you're going to drink water out of a, a bottle, at least make it a glass. Do a Gerald Steiner, do a Mountain Valley, do a Topo Chico, do a Pellegrino. Get it your own RO filter. Obviously, add some minerals back in to remineralize. I'm and obviously, you know, the cows that are being fed a whole bunch of grains that are full of Roundup pesticides. I'm concerned about that stuff environmentally. I'm really concerned about that. And they don't even care. I mean, when I was on your show, we talked about, you know, Dr. Anthony J. By the way, have you connected with Dr. Anthony J? Have you guys had a podcast together? No, I need to reach out to him. Oh, no, no. I'll just connect you, man. Yeah, I'll that'd be, be great. Like, Jay and yeah. you, you guys need to just yes. kill it. This guy is all over it. But, uh, but you know, I mean, the reality is you're right. I mean, they don't care, bro, because they're not going to talk about it. They know the EPA has all the data. They know what the endocrine disrupting chemicals are doing. They know that the fish that are female on January for are male on January 1st are female on December. You know, they know all this stuff, but they don't give a shit. It's not part of big agra's agenda to, you know, feed the planet with GMO crap. I mean, bro, when is somebody going to actually do like a five to 10 year analysis of what GMO products are doing by breaking down as byproducts in the human digestive system? That's what I really want to see, because I would actually say they're probably creating polymers. Yeah, I mean, we know out of the gates, a lot of these pesticides, they especially the ones that cause internal pesticide secretion, yes. right, of these seeds that, that produce yes. their own pesticides. Once they get in your gut, they destroy your brush border. So they make it harder for you to digest foods. They cause your gut to be more permeable. When your gut's more permeable, you have a higher risk for autoimmune conditions because you have all these bacterial proteins or food proteins go into your bloodstream. And now you get this molecular mimicry thing happening where your immune system starts tagging surface proteins that look similar to tissues in the body. And that creates a whole bunch of problems. I I mean, Anthony, you know, we'll get, we'll get to the end of this podcast because I want to be responsible to your time. Amazing show. Uh, But Anthony says that, Hey man, like, you know, nobody wants to talk about this and no matter who I bring it up with, but a lot of the fat people in the Midwest are not fat because they're overeating and not exercising. It's literally because they have these chemicals laced into the rinds of their visceral fat. And it's exactly what you just said, literally preventing absorption, breakdown, increasing inflammasomes. I mean, if you started doing studies on some of these obese people in the Midwest, and granted, I know a lot of these people are insulin resistant and metabolically deranged, but for the ones that aren't, and I've heard these stories, I've had these people reach out to me. I'm sure you've had hundreds of these people. Dude, they're contaminated. They are. They have been contaminated by the environment. 100%. And so we're speaking about the C word over the last two years. I looked at a study down in Houston, 60% of the people that die from the C word were actually uh, type two diabetic. Now here's the problem. When you get the C word in your body, your fat cells, when you're right. obese and you're in, resistant, you actually make interleukin six. Yes. So you're actually right. creating more inflammation. Your fat cells Absolutely. are programmed to make more inflammation, more interleukins and cytokines when you're exposed to that to that virus. And so it's really important. Part of the best way you can reduce inflammation in your body is decreasing your fat and your fat is a source of inflammation. That is literally, by the way, my number one tenant when I lecture and present now that the number one most effective preventative means that you have to your disposal is not to any drugs. It's not any diet. It's literally being lean, bro. You're 100% right. Yeah. Keeping your body fat you know, within 10 to 15% as a dude and within 15 to 20% as a woman is going to give you a longer, stronger life than anything else. Now, obviously there's a lot of great adjuncts that you and I can add, but if you just do that, you will guard yourself or safeguard yourself from the disease of aging. Now, like you said, you do have to do 
some form of bone bearing resistance training. Hopefully, you know, I, I, Ideally, I have a lot yeah. of people, yoga, bro. Well, yoga is great, but you still got to build your bones. And so many people don't build their bones. But anyway, I want to be fair to you. Uh, this has been profound. Is there anything that you didn't say today that you would like to say? And then, of course, share with anybody who watches this, A, how they can work with you, and B, if they want to do a podcast with you and they hear your brain. Uh, how's that possible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you guys want to reach out just in I'm Dr. J. When you're there, podcast link, YouTube link, rumble, all that stuff. You guys can reach out to get more info on that. Again, I see patients around the world. Again, the goal is assessing, not guessing. So if you want to get to the root cause of, of why you have a thyroid issue or adrenal issue or a female hormone issue or male hormone issue, you have gut issues or audible immune or toxicities from metal or mold, and you want to dive in deeper, you know, definitely reach out. There'll be links there for y'all. And again, I always tell patients, you know, they're listening, just try to figure out one thing. A lot of times we're talking about a lot of things, but if you can just listen and be like, oh crap, I'm not going to eat that Franken food, or I'm going to get a high quality or a water filter, Wh whatever that is, just grab one thing and just take hold of it. That, that's really the key. Bro, you are amazing, man. I really am grateful that you came on the podcast here today. I'll talk to you in a second off air. But for all of you amazing people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, I mean, Dr. Jay is like clearly one of the best holistic integrative docs I've ever brought on the show. This guy is a wealth of knowledge. Please reach out to him. Go to his website, justinhealth.com. Consult with him. Connect with him. If you're somebody like me, and I know there are a lot of you guys that are watching my podcast, reach out to this dude and get him on your show. And remember, Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Love it.